In this video, we will practice a basic gynecological examination on this pelvic model. The objectives of this video are to understand the indications, equipment needed, and how a basic gynecological examination is carried out. The gynecological examination is used to assess the internal and external genitalia as well as the urethra and rectum if indicated. Common indications for a gynecological examination would include menstrual abnormalities, vaginal discharge, and urinary incontinence, among many other indications. For gynecological examination, the necessary equipment includes a speculum, an adjustable light source, and swabs or smears if necessary. Specula come in different sizes and types. Smaller speculums would be used for nulliparous or postmenopausal females, while larger speculums would be used for multiparous females or those with a larger size. Plastic specula are single use and disposable, while metal specula can be used multiple times with sterilization between each use. The commonly used speculum is called couscous speculum, which is bivalve in nature. The SIMS speculum is a single valve speculum that is usually used in the operating theatre. Before carrying out the examination, informed consent should be obtained from the patient. For male providers, a female chaperone must be present in the room during the examination. The gynecological examination can be split into multiple parts. The general examination, the abdominal examination, and the pelvic examination. For the general examination, the patient's general condition and vital signs should be observed and examined. If necessary, a cardiorespiratory examination can also be carried out. In female patients, it is optimal to perform a breast examination if the patient is comfortable as an opportunistic screening, as missing a malignant breast lump can affect the management and outcome of the patient. In terms of exposure for the subsequent components, the patient removes her clothing from the lower half of the body. Once she has prepared herself on the examination table by lying supine, we will begin with the abdominal examination. The purpose of the abdominal examination would be to palpate and detect masses arising from gynecological structures. The ideal exposure for the abdominal examination would be from the xiphus sternum to the pubic symphysis. The regions below the pubic symphysis would be covered for now in view of the patient's modesty. Before starting the examination, perform hand hygiene. Firstly, inspect the abdomen for any obvious masses, distension and surgical scars. After inspection, ask the patient if she has any abdominal pain. If abdominal pain is present, begin palpation from the area furthest away from the site of discomfort. Palpate the abdomen to check for any tenderness or masses. While palpating the abdomen, look at the patient's face to check for expressions of pain or discomfort. If there is tenderness on palpation, the presence of rebound tenderness and guarding should be elicited. Important signs of peritoneal irritation. After the abdominal examination, we would move on to the pelvic examination. The pelvic examination can be split into two parts, the speculum examination and the bimanual palpation. For the pelvic examination, the patient's lower genitalia are then exposed, with the patient in a dorsal lithotomy position. Before beginning the speculum examination, the external genitalia are first inspected for the distribution of pubic hair and the presence of any skin lesions or discharge. The patient can then be asked to cough and strain to check for stress incontinence and pelvic organ prolapse respectively, if indicated. For the speculum, it should be lubricated with either warm water or standard lubricants. For the insertion of the speculum, the labial folds are parted and the speculum is advanced inwards gently. Atraumatic insertion is aided by assisting muscle relaxation at the opening of the vagina, which can be accomplished by reassuring the patient and getting her to relax. Once the speculum is fully inserted, open the speculum to visualize the cervix. 
If the cervix is not visible, readjust the speculum. Once the cervix is visualized, the knob can be turned to make the speculum self-retaining. After that, check for the cervix's position, size, and for the presence of abnormal cervical lesions, masses, or bleeding. The vaginal wall should be inspected for its color, moisture, and the presence of rugae. Any vaginal lesions and bleeding should also be noted. Relevant procedures such as a pap smear or vaginal swabs can also be carried out at this time. When the speculum examination is complete, unwind the self-retaining knob and remove the speculum gently to not cause discomfort. For the bimanual examination, the lubricated gloved finger is inserted into the vagina along the vaginal axis. The cervix should be felt for its position, consistency, mobility, and tenderness. After that, the posterior fornix should be felt, and a bimanual examination would be performed to assess for the size, position, and mobility of the uterus. The presence of tenderness or any abnormal masses should also be noted. After that, the adnexal regions should be examined with a bimanual examination, feeling for any adnexal masses or tenderness. After completing the pelvic examination, a rectal examination can be performed if indicated to assess for the uterosacral ligaments and the posterior cul-de-sac. After completing the examination, thank the patient and allow her to get dressed. Thus, this concludes the video on the basic gynecological examination where we have discussed the indications, equipment needed, and how a basic gynecological examination is carried out. Quiz time. Question 1. What is the correct sequence of a gynecological examination? Question 2. Procedures such as an endocervical swab can be carried out during a gynecological examination?